Hey guys, what's up? LGS here, back with another deck profile. This time, I'll be doing a deck profile on the Genesis Clan and the new boss, the pretty, the much sought after Minerva. Oh my gosh, she's so pretty! Well, a lot of people want her because currently she is one of the meta decks running around. Um, upon set 14 release, when Minerva came out, she actually helped bring Genesis a much new um, power play you know with a restanding vanguard you know with restanding vanguards coming out everywhere since set 10 so genesis finally got her own their own restanding vanguard and she's also one of uh, one of the arguably arguably best restanding vanguard currently in the game so uh, if for those of you who don't know genesis um, is a clan that focuses on soul blasting so they soul blast to activate skill and to yeah to do stuff and there are some cards that have skills that activate when they are so blasted out of the soul. And uh, before this, um, upon Gen when Genesis was first introduced in set 10, there isn't really much for Genesis to do. You know, their break right focuses on soul blasting to draw cards, and their previous ace, which is Fortuna, was um, focused on removing chance from the game by allowing you to redo drive tracks by soul blasting. You know, so essentially, you know, you are guaranteed guaranteed triggers. To really push your opponent, and you know, it has some supports which are somewhat okay. It uh, it allows you to give free calls, you know, and so on and so forth. But with Minerva from set fourteen, it brings Genesis to a whole new level, and I would say that this is a pretty good deck. So Minerva is also um one of those cross rides running around. Uh, upon set fourteen, oh, upon the Link Joker arc with reverse units and so on and so forth. There are many cards that are getting um, cross rights, so this is uh, they're jumping onto this cross right train, and now there's this thing called cross break right. So Minerva is also a cross break right, and she's a cross right of Angelica. I don't know why, but their names change. So she was Angelica, now she's Minerva. And for those of you who knows, who don't know, EB twelve, this is the one for Genesis. The next EB. We'll have another cross right for Angelica called Broomhield. So apparently she changes names once she gets cross right. Which is weird. Oh well. Anyways, so yeah. So Minerva is supported by her break right Angelica to achieve cross rights. And in within the deck, there are many other cards that support her skill and support soul charging and etc. But there's one card I would like to highlight that really, 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 really helps and synergize with Minerva called Ordain Owl. Which I will discuss later. But for but for that bleh, which I'll discuss later. But for now, let's go to the deck profile first. So for the starter, we run the Great Three Searcher. The skill is counter plus one, put into the soul, and you can look at the top five cards for a Great Three and put it in your hand. So number one, you know, you run her because you know you want to get your Angelicas and your Angelic uh, Angelicas and Minervas in your hand to be able to help you achieve your cross ride. But, you know, um, since this deck soul charges quite often, it's not actually that hard to soul charge an Angelica in case you miswrite her. So, you can still get the cross right off pretty easily. But, number one, she also, she's also placed in your soul, which helps fuel your soul for soul blasting. And you get to get a grade 3 into your hand to guarantee getting Maneva or the cross right, or getting grade 3s to use for Odin L skill, which I'll explain later. So, for the grade 3s, we run for Minerva, the main boss of this deck. So her skill is a resetting skill, so counter blast one and soul charge so blast three and choose three cards from your hand and discard it. Three genesis from your hand and discard it. At the end of the battle that these units uh, attacked, you may pay the cost. If you do stand this unit and this unit gets five K at the end of turn and this ability can be used for the rest of the turn. Second skill is that if you have Angelica in the soul she gets two K forever. So cross right thirteen K forever. Thirteen K body, thirteen K Attacking and defensive body, which is pretty good. So, as you can see, the skill is at the end of this battle. At the end of battle, that is, this unit attacked. If you compare it to most resending vanguards, I would say that all resending vanguards require you to attack a vanguard to resend. Minerva is different. She can re attack any anything. So basically, at the end of battle, that this unit attack anything. Basically, you can resend her, and she gains five k. So essentially. If your opponent guards the first time, she needs to guard more. She needs he needs more to guard when she restands. Because she gets an additional 5k. 
most other descendants such as reading form, um, read, uh, descendant. What else do we have? Yeah, basically descendants. Most of uh, blouse. Basically, most of them have to attack vanguard. But this can attack anything. Although the break right of Donner's Drive Dragon also has no. Is there a specific? I remember. Oh yeah, I think you also need to attack Vanguard. Yeah, so so far all resetting Vanguards require you to hit, attack the Vanguard to restand. So yeah, so this is the probably the first one that doesn't need to attack Vanguard. So it's pretty good. Gives you more options of what to attack and you can restand. And um, for those of you who look forward into the future, I mean not really look forward into the future, as in for those of you who have foresight, this is actually quite good against Glendios because Glendios would present a new challenge for Resending Vanguard which I will explain in my Glendios deck when it comes out. Yeah. So next we have for Angelica, the break ride. You need her because, well, you want the cross ride. So her skill is when, it's, when a Genesis writes a unit, basically when it's written upon, uh, you can solve us 3. If you do, draw 2 cards and your Vanguard gets 10k. So yeah, solve us 3 for drawing 2 cards. So this helps you to draw cards. And the second skill is auto. When this unit attacks a vanguard, slow charge one, and this unit gets ten k. Sorry, it gets one k. So whenever Angelica attacks a vanguard, you must slow charge one. It's not. It doesn't say you may. So you must slow charge. So one. So essentially, Angelica helps you slow charge in case you know you have a bad hand. You have no other rearguards or support that helps you slow charge. At least you know she is sort of self sustaining where she can you can where you can you know slow blast one when it attacks a vanguard. So run four because. Well, you want the cross right on. You want to get the cross right, and also you want to run four, as many as many great three regards as possible for the great one skill, which I'll explain later. So for great two, we run three um, witch of ravens, chamomile. So her skill is come last one. When this unit is put from into the drop zone from the soul, you if you have Genesis Vanguard, you can call pay the cost. If you do, call it to R. So actually, she gives you a free call. So whenever you soul blast her up from the soul, like that, you can kind of blast one, call her to R. So essentially, essentially, she gives you a free call. So whenever you soul blast, also do take note what you need to soul blast because if you want, you want to soul blast her out to get a free call. And also, she as she she also helps you uh, achieve multiple attacks because let's say you attack with your rear guard, attack, attack, if you attacks, soul blast her. Call her on top of something else, and then you have another standing rear guard to attack again. So in one turn, you can potentially actually attack with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six times. You can have six attacks. Rear guard, rear guard, vanguard, vanguard, rear guard, rear guard. If you manage to solve two plus two of out and call her out, yeah. So you can have a total of s potentially six attacks in a turn, which is pretty good. So the next week two we have uh, battle maiden Sahohime. She helps you soul charge. So basically, her skill is when this unit attacks, hits a vanguard, you may pay the cost. Well, counter plus one. If you do, soul charge three. So yeah, hit vanguard, soul charge three. Nothing much to say about it. Pretty straightforward. Next way to run is uh, Goddess of Trees, Jupiter. So she is the twelve k attacker for Regalia. And although um, for those of you who are Genesis players, this is probably a headache for you. She is from a trial deck. But Bushi wrote somehow decided to reprint her in the BT14 set as well. So she is reprinted. Unlike other Tofke attackers for other clans, sub clans, you can only get them from trial decks. So now she can be get take she can get her from trial deck as well as set 14, which makes trial decks all the more less of a reason to buy because right now all you want to buy trial decks for is just for Angelica because she you can get her so easily. And I just don't know why they want to reprint it because now she has lost her value because she's so easy to get. But whatever. Renting out of the way, let's get back to the deck. Renting out of the way. So now we have three Witch of Grapes Grappa. So she's a new card from Sephardine. Basically, when this card is put into the drop zone from your soul, you can soul charge two. So basically, she helps you rebuild your soul. So let's say you soul, 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 you soul blast her, you can then soul charge. 1 and 2. So basically, it's a plus 1 soul charge. So run 3, just for attack, you know. So for great ones, well, the great ones, there's a lot of attacks you can run for great ones. But these are the choices 
that my friend has made for his deck. This is not my deck, it's my friend's deck. So for grade 1, he runs 2 Quintet Balls and 2 Perfect Yards. Um, he runs Quintet Walls because he finds that it's, you know, it can be useful. You know, sometimes if you want to, you know, um, combo her with another card to Soul Charge, which I'll explain later. But yeah, so you can also run one Quintet Wall and three Perfect Guards if you want to, but it's up to you. You can, exp you can experiment because, you know, as you know, Genesis Soul, soul Charges a lot. And if you use Quintet Wall, you are losing five cards from your deck at that moment, which can be dangerous because you can potentially deck out. So for the next great one he runs is Apple Witch Cider. Now this is one of those interesting new cards that comes from the tri trial deck. So his skill is when this unit is placed in the garden circle from your hand. Okay, keyword is from your hand. Choose your vanguard with regular in its card name. And until the end of the battle this unit gets when your Genesis Garden is put into the drop zone, put that card into your soul. So basically what happens is that whenever you throw her into the garden circle when you guard, everything that is else that's in the garden circle, including her, goes into your soul after they are used for guarding. So what you do is, let's say your vanguard gets hit attacked, you call her, and you whatever else you guard, they go into the drop zone and then into the soul. So that's why this card combos really really well with your quintet wall. So what you do is you call quintet wall, kind of plus one. Look at 5 cards from the top of your deck, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 as your guarding power. Then you throw one more apple which sided from your hand. Now all of these uh, 7 cards go into your soul. Boom. An instant 7 soul charge which is pretty insane. And 7 soul charge is actually pretty good for this deck because you really need souls. And getting 7 at 1 go is really easy. Although um, to be able to achieve that is quite situational. So not every game is quite, it's actually quite rare for you to actually pull that combo off but it's useful to be able to achieve that combo because it's pretty good. But yeah, depending on the situation, you may not be able to achieve it because yeah, you may not have your quintet wall in hand, you may not want to use quintet wall because it's not worth it, all kinds of reasons. Anyways, um, yeah, rerun for all that because pretty useful card to help you soul charge. Because what, number one, you, she also helps you not to soul charge from your deck because as I mentioned earlier, Genesis can take out easily. So if you actually, if you use her with while guarding, it helps you achieve soul charging without actually um, risking putting your deck at the risk of taking out. So basically, you're soul charging from your hand that which you are using to guard, which is pretty good because number one, you get to guard. Number two, your deck is spared from taking out. So next, my friend runs three, which of cats cumin or some people like to say, come in, <laughs> if you get it, if you know what I mean. Anyway, her skill is, when she is called to a Vanguard Circle or a Regal Circle, if you have Genesis Vanguard, Soul Charge 1. So she kind of helps you with Soul Charging, which is pretty good. So that is some of the main great ones. Although, some of you may, may be thinking, well, there are other great ones you can use. Well, there are other great one attacks you can use, such as the Tanky Attacker, as well as the Witch of Orange Valencia, which is basically the Grappa clone. So if you Soul Blast her out, Soul Charge 2. As or you can even use uh, Tatsu Tahime, which is the booster version of Saho Hime. Basically, we, we boost and hit the Vanguard, come last one, at, come last two, and Soul Touch three. But then again, your Great One space is really tight, and you don't you don't want to use a Tanke attacker because you want Great Ones to help you support Soul Charging as well as other stuff, and you know, um, you want Great Ones, yeah to boost as well so I mean depending on how you want to play the deck you can maybe tag this too as well but my friend chooses to use this great ones instead and the final great one he plays which is a very very key card in his deck and I would say it's one of the really it really brings a new dimension to his deck is Ordained Owl okay um, for those of you who don't know his key skill is choose a great 3 card with regular in his card name from your drop zone and put it at the bottom of the deck. If you do, uh, if you have a Genesis Vanguard, choose one of your grade 3 units with regular any card name and it gets 5k. So basically what happens is that when he's on the field, you can um, shove back a grade 3 regalia from your drop zone into the deck and your other grade 3 regalia, any of them, gets 5k. So let's say you have your Vanguard and Vanguard all have regalia, 
great trees. Uh, they're all great tree regular. And you put use ordinary house steel. You can choose to give any of this guy 5k. But of course, you want to give it to your vanguard. So for those of you who really research cards, you would know that there's a clone version of this in Ashley deck and as well as Go Paladin for Cancelot. So they have the same skill except that for Go Paladin, it's put Great Tree cards with Gunslot in his name and you give a Gunslot 5k. For Jewel Knight, it's put Great Tree Ashley in his card name into the deck and your Ashley Great Tree gets 5k. Now, to me, I think that those two are pretty decent deck, but I believe that Ordin Owl is probably the best of the three because he is really good. Because Ash, um, the Royal Paladin and Gold Paladin one are very specific to a certain card. Like the Ashley one is specific to Ashley, Gold Paladin one is specific to Gansalot, and you can't use them in any other decks. Whereas Ordin Owl, you only, you only need to use it for a Regalia Grade 3, which is a sub clan, and he's splashable in any Regalia build. So you can use him in any regal build to power up your regalia vanguard or rearguard which is insane so this deck this card is really useful even in the future you know for those of you who follow legion you have ceo yggdrasil you can pump ceo yggdrasil like crazy with her with him with Odin Al, and swing for a lot of attack yeah so so yeah so that's the deck oh sorry sorry forgot triggers my friend runs an astonishing of an astonishing twelve crits and four heals. Because this deck is a very, very, very offensive deck because you have Minerva which restands and push for instant amounts of amounts of power. So you want to really pressure opponent with a lot of crits. So he plays twelve crits in his deck. And one of the crits is put in the soul and choose another rear guard and then get unit gets three K. So it helps build your soul as well. If you like soul. So yeah, now with the deck profile of the way, let me explain some of the ways this deck should be played and how you know this deck is such a good deck and how Minerva is a really really good resender with the help of its supports and how it's able to push your opponent like really well. I mean I played against this deck and wow my friend can really really push me and wow it really is pretty good. Anyways, so the main thing you want to achieve is your cross right of Minerva and use this recipe her resending skill. Next you will definitely want to have an Ordin Al on your field on your field and you also want some regulars in your drop zone. Oh yeah I also forgot to mention why Ordin Al is good is because in this deck in Regalia in Genesis it's a lot more it's a lot easier to get your regular great trees into your drop zone because you soul charge a lot and it's very likely for you to soul charge regulars into your soul and when you soul blast, you can just soul blast and out. So it's very easy to get them into your soul, uh, into your drop zone. Whereas for Ashley and against Lot, the only ways to get them in drop zone is either one, you heal the damage, or two, use it to uh, use it as a discard for uh, perfect guard, or number three, they kill one of your regards with Ashley or against Lot. So yeah, um, Genesis has an additional way of getting regulars into your drop zone by soul blasting, which is pretty easy to achieve. So you have them in your Drop zone, okay, and yeah. So your regards can be anything. You can you have you can have her in your soul. So when she attacks, okay, before she attacks, use Ordin Owl skill, shove regulars in back into the bottom of the deck, and she gain she powers up by five k for each regular cut you shove into the deck. So let's just say you have six, and you shove all six into your deck. That is a whopping 30k to your vanguard. So now Minerva is swinging for 41k. And she can re-stand, which adds another 5k. So now she's swinging for another uh, 46k. I mean, with, with cross right, it's 49. No, sorry, 48. Which is crazy. That's why Minerva is such a good deck. Because you have Odin Al that supports her. And she can re-stand and hit for big ass, big, big numbers. And you have other cards, you know, like that support in soul charging. You have the top care beater. You have the chamomile, the initial blast. You get free call. So yeah, this deck is pretty good. It's pretty consistent as well. You can constantly consistently push. And the thing is, you know, Minerva is such a strong card. You can actually just purely, um, this deck can be a purely vanguard play. You don't really need any any rearguards at all. You can just push your opponent with just a resending vanguard 
with the help of Odin Owl and pump up, pump her up every single turn, maybe you know. Okay, guys, so so yeah, this is the medieval deck profile. Um, there is nothing really much to else talk about. You know, Minerva is pretty good. She's resender. She's a resender with Odin Owl's support. She you can pump her up like crazy. And with card support that help soul charge, you can you know help build up soul to fuel her. Also, do take note of kind of blast use. Um, so far, only these two other cards use kind of blast, and Minerva use one one kind of blast. So yeah, this deck isn't actually kind of blast heavy, and yeah, pretty good deck. So if you guys have any comment or suggestion, please write down in the comment section below. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you have anything to talk about. You know any criticisms with the way I do things? Do let me know in either the message or comment down below. So yeah, this is Minerva Deck, and this has been LJS. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.